Are you ready? Good. So I want to talk about Arcus Dreams, hopefully for great good. Um, before diving into Arcus Dreams, let me ask a question. Who is using Arca? Awesome. Um, who has already worked with Arca Streams? Oh, come on. <laughs> so many. Hopefully you will still get a little bit of an interesting talk out of that. Okay, so what is Arca Streams? Arca Streams is an implementation of reactive streams. Reactive streams is an initiative. It's a standard for asynchronous stream processing with non-blocking back pressure, as you can read here on that website. I think this is a really interesting thing um, uh, because tr streaming or stream processing is, is a really uh, a new kid on the block. It's, it's very hot these days. And uh, having a standard for JVM at least, um, which allows us to work with a different implementation in an interchangeable way makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm going to talk no more about reactive streams, but about ACA streams. Uh, ACA streams has been added to ACA 2.4, and uh, it's a fairly new module. Uh, but it's no longer marked as experimental, so the API should remain stable. And what I'm going to show you today is no slides, but live coding, live demos, uh, looking or hopefully um, explaining um, how the um, Arca Streams API looks like. Um, in order to get started, we need a little bit of boilerplate, namely an actor system and an actor materializer. I will tell you a little bit about materialization later on. And uh, once we have that, we can start writing uh, simple streams. I won't dive into complex streams, namely into graphs, cyclic graphs or whatever, which is absolutely possible with Arca streams, um, but I will only show you linear pipelines. And those are written in a special uh, DSL, the flow DSL, where you have boxes called source, flow, and sync, which have an outlet or an inlet and an outlet or just an inlet, okay? A source is a box which has an outlet, so it can produce elements into a stream. And a flow has an inlet and an outlet, and a sync only has an inlet. Okay, let's get started with a source. Let's say we have a single source single. Oh, okay, I have to import source first, but not the Java DSL. This is a Scala conference, so I'm going for the Scala one. And then I take the source single method, and here I copy this great piece of text in. So what is that? Um, I have to trick IntelliJ. So what is that type-wise? It's a source of string and, ooh, not used. We talk about that second type parameter later. It's a source producing strings, a single string only. Okay, great, what can we do with that? Let's try to connect it to a sync using the two combinator. And let's use a sync, Scala DSL one, dot for each, where we do print ln, okay? So a sync for each, doing print ln, gives us, ooh, a sync of string and a future of done, okay? Well, the whole thing here is not yet doing anything. It's not running. It's just a blueprint. The type is a runnable graph. So the type already tells us we can run that thing because we have connected all the open ends. We have connected the source to the sink. There's no unconnected inlet or outlet. So therefore, we can run it. And we have to run it to get the machinery started. So we can call the run method. And as you can see here, this takes a materializer. Um, and that's the reason why we have uh, this act materializer as an implicit value on line 32. By the way, can you read that? Is it large enough? No complaints? Thanks. So running, also called the materialization, uh, takes the blueprint and 
turns it into the processing engine. So then the source starts emitting elements and all the stages are hot. Okay, so let's run this whole program and see what is happening. Ooh. Ah, yeah, of course. Sorry for that. So we see learn you Arca streams for great good is printed. Hooray! But we also see that the application is still up and running. Why is that? Well, we have started an active system. An active system essentially has a thread pool and that hasn't been shut down. So therefore, our system is still up and running. Um, the next thing I would like to do is I would like to know when the stream processing has come to an end, which might or might not happen, right? In this case, it will happen because we have a source signal. But if you think about streams in general, they might be um, non-finite. They might go on and go on forever. And in order to know whether processing has come to an end or not, we need to extract that information from the stream. And how do we interact with the stream? That is a concept called materialized value. Each stage, like the source or the sink, has a materialized value, which is created when you materialize the stream, when you run the blueprint, okay? And the type of that materialized value can be seen in um, the parameter list. So looking at that again, source of string and not use tells us that this source signal has a materialized value of type not used. And not used is essentially the same like unit. The only reason to have it is because, or not using unit, is that Arca Streams has Java DSL too, and in Java they cannot use the Scala unit, so they decided to go for this Arca dot not used. So that's not interesting, but what about this? You have already seen that the type of that sync is a sync of string and future of done. Now this is an interesting materialized value. It will tell us when the thing is done. It would be good to get that, but how can we get the materialized value? Well, the run method returns the materialized value of the whole thing we have built here. Um, looking at that, we have a runnable graph of not used. Why? What has happened to this future of done? Well, the reason why we cannot see the future of done, we cannot see the materialized value of this sync, is the two combinator is biased. It only keeps the left materialized value, the one from the source single, and it drops the right one. Um, in order to um, get both or the right one or whatever you need, we have to call the to mat method, which additionally takes a second parameter. And here we can use the keep dot both left, none, right. That's what we want. Okay. Let me just format that for you. So now the type of this thing is a random graph of future of done. Cool, so the run method will give us this future, and we can say on complete. Uh, we don't care whether it's a success or failure, we just terminate the system, okay? And in order for this to compile, we also have to import. What do we have to import? Yeah, that's the thing you always have to import to make things work. <laughs> um, Okay, now let's run that again. What's that strange message? Anyway, so you can see now we still get our learn new Arca streams for great good, and we get this process finished with Xcode 0. Cool. So we are there. <laughs> um, so we have built the probably simplest possible stream, right? We have a source, we have connected it to a sink. Um, and we have also seen that those stages 
have materialized values. And in a typical real-world application, um, you have streams which are comprised of, let's say, five or ten stages. And you are usually interested in at least one or maybe two or three of the materialized values. A couple of stages like the source single only have this not used materialized value, but there are really interesting ones. For example, let's take a look at source.maybe. The source maybe gives us a source um, which has a materialized value of type of promise of option of t. So you get back a promise when you run that stream and you can use that promise to complete it, right? If you complete it with some A or some T or with none, um, something will happen, <laughs> okay? If you complete it with some value, this value will be emitted by the source. And if you complete it with none, the source will just complete the stream without emitting any element. So you have a trigger, a trigger to emit a single element or just no element at all and complete the stream. Um, and there's also another really interesting one, the source queue. The source queue gives us the possibility to put more than a single element, like this maybe example I have shown you before, but put many elements into a stream, right? So you have a queue and you can um, feed elements into that. But of course, you only get that materialized value when you run your graph or your uh, linear pipeline. OK, so what I would like to get at is that we write a program which does the following. It's not absolutely necessary to use ACA streams to print that, as you can probably imagine. Um, but nevertheless, let's do it as an exercise. Um, as you probably have seen, uh, we indent each line. Uh, we only have seven lines, and uh, there's an increasing indent. And of course, each character is printed individually uh, in a very slow speed. So let's try to accomplish that with ACA streams. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the source single. We need to repeat that line, learn you ACA streams for great good, several times. Well, which source should we use to repeat something? Well, maybe the source repeat. Hooray. But this will not really terminate. So if I run that, we will see a lot of output, and it will never terminate, because the source repeat will keep on emitting elements endlessly. OK, so we have to kill it. Stop it. Yeah. Okay, I ruined everything now. Okay. So, we only want to take seven lines. So, let's add one more stage to only take seven. Oh, it's called take. Great. So, the API looks a little bit like the collection API in Scala, but streams are not collections at all. OK, so with that, we are getting closer to where we want to get, right? So this should terminate after 7. Cool. Now, what else is necessary? Somehow we have to know the indent, which starts with 0, 1, 2, and so on. So we need to keep track of the index of the element. OK, how can we do that? How would you do that with uh, sequences, with collections? Any ideas? Zip with index. Yeah, zip with index. That's a great idea. So let's see whether we can do something like that. Oh, cool. There's even a zip with index. Awesome. Uh, I didn't know that, by the way. I really did. I learned something new because what I did was zip. And now we need to provide a different um, source. So what we can do is here, a source dot from iterator, ta-da, and here we do iterator dot from zero. Okay, 
That's for guys like me who don't know zip with index. <laughs> okay, so you can zip arbitrary sources. Um, now that we have that, we somehow need to deal with that thing. So let's first look at the type. After zipping, we have a source of string int tuples. Okay, that looks good. Um, so what we can do now is we can call, what would you call with collections? To transform this into a string? Yeah, the most powerful methods ever, map. So let's go for a map and uh, let's use pattern matching to extract the string and the number and uh, just return the string to make the compiler happy. This now should be a source of string again. It is, okay. But we need to indent it and uh, what we can do is we can do val i, sorry, equals, and th this is really fancy. Did you know that you can multiply strings? <laughs> I love Scala. And then you do, that's also lovely. <laughs> this is string interpolation with formatting. Awesome. Because we should probably, we should probably, no, I think this will work, hopefully. So let's run it. Yeah, looks like it should. But it's still printed too fast, right? Why? Because we still have a source of uh, string, okay? Source of string, so each line. But we want each character to be printed. So what we have to do now is we have to turn that um, into a uh, flow or source of characters. So each line should be treated. Change map to flat map and so this, uh, so yeah, change map to flat map. And now here, so that's a great idea, here is a difference between streams and collections because there's no flat map. There's a flat map merge and a flat map concat <laughs> because, well, I don't want to dive into that. <laughs> so, yeah, essentially we build upon your idea and we just do map concat and that does the trick. <laughs> map concat expects a sequence of things and a string is a sequence of chars. As you can see here, this slight underline shows us that it's no longer a Java lang string, but this implicitly converted to rich string, string wrapper thingy. So um, map concat, oh, sorry, um, expects a function from an element to an iterable of other elements. So what we are doing here is we um, produce a source of char. Okay, cool. I think we're almost there. You probably won't really notice. Ah, okay. One thing we forgot now is that we have to end, add the line ending here. That's the reason I was using this F string interpolator, so we can use that format syntax for the new line. And uh, what is also missing is we need to slow it down a little bit, right? That, that was really too fast, so. I will run it again. It really, whoops. Ah, yeah, thank you. Double mistake. <laughs> yeah, so it's still too fast, so we cannot see that the characters are printed individually. So in order to achieve that goal, we need to throttle down the rate, and we can use the throttle method for that. There's a throttle method which tells us uh, how many elements per, um, per duration. So I have to do another import here. Import Scala dot concurrent dot duration dot duration int. And now I can say per second. Hooray. And of course I don't want to have one but 42 per second. Uh, the maximum burst um, 
I put that at, at one. And then we have to say throttle mode shaping. Um, enforcing would fail the stream if the rate is not, uh, if the rate doesn't fit. So we want to shape it. We want to make it 42 per second. Hooray, that looks good. We're there. And if we run it here, it will even look better. Yeah, that's how it should look like. Okay, so going back, we have defined a single runnable graph. So we have defined a stream, so to say, a stream processing uh, definition, and we run it ad hoc. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six stages. Um, and one of the, the most important aspects when designing the API was composition, composition, uh, the, the ability to compose. This is a terrible word, compositionality. Uh, I cannot speak that. Anyway, so it is really possible to um, build um, elements of a stream uh, processing uh, a blueprint um, and reuse them. So they are, all those blueprints, all those sources and sinks and flows, they are immutable um, and, and can be shared and reused and or used to build larger topologies. So what we could do is, for example, we could say, well, seven lines equals this thing here. Okay, and then we could also say, um, uh, well, what's that? Uh, two indented chars equals, now we have to start with a flow. Uh, it's a flow of, uh, I think string. Okay, and uh, we can also say val, um, print throttled. Um, that is, what is that? That's a flow of char, I think. Okay. And what we can do now is we can say seven lines dot via um, to indented chars. So the via combinator allows us to um, combine a source with a flow. And then we say to, uh, we should say to mat uh, print throttled and keep dot write. Okay. And hopefully this still compiles. So what we did is we defined three pieces. So this is a source and this is a flow of string to char and uh, not used yeah, I think that's fine. And here we have a sync. Okay, should still work, hopefully. Yeah, looks good. And uh, yeah, that way you can really build your reusable stream processing pieces and put them together as needed. Um, so, that was this simple demo I wanted to show you. And uh, as I said, um, this is just one aspect of uh, the API of Arcus Streams. This is probably the most important aspect. It is okay for at least 80% of the cases to just work with linear streaming uh, uh, pipelines. Uh, but sometimes you need fan in, you need fan out, so you need to go away from this simple linear thing, go to a graph. And sometimes your graphs even need cycles or something, so feedback loops, that's totally possible. Um, one thing um, I would like to show you is um, something I implemented for the Alpaca project. Alpaca is, um, let's say, um, camel done right, <laughs> based on Arca, Arca streams. So um, I contributed something there. 
Um, it, <coughs> it is, well, SSE event source. I think it's this file, Scala DSL, hopefully. Okay, here we go. So what has been implemented in, in, in Alpaca uh, as an event source is a graph which essentially does this thingy here. Um, I don't expect you to understand the details, um, but here is a source which is a trigger. Then here we have a merge which, well, either takes this trigger or this other element which comes from here in this feedback loop. And then it does this event sources magic where it calls a HTTP server, gets back a response which is kept open and the server can push events down to this client here. Um, and uh, yeah, usually this can continue more or less endlessly, but sooner or later there will be a connection problem and uh, this source will have come to an end, will be completed with a failure or maybe even with a success. And then we want to reconnect. So therefore, when we see that this thing is done, uh, we just remember what was the last event ID and we feed that back here. And um, the whole thing is a source of service and events. And this can be exp expressed uh, with just a couple of lines of code. And the essence is shown here at the bottom. So let me scroll that up. The essence is really this part here. Um, so instead of using uh, the API I have shown you before, we use the graph DSL. Uh, and in the graph DSL, you define a couple of stages. And then finally, you put them together. You wire them together using those operators. Um, and if you format that nicely, you even get a visual representation of how your uh, graph looks like. So I think in this case, you can see that elements are flowing this way and then again flowing this way, so here into the merge, so you really see visually that there's a feedback loop. And um, if you're really interested in, in, in advanced Archistream stuff, take a look at the source code in the Alpaca repository. It's on GitHub. Because there's a couple of things which are really interesting here. Um, uh, I don't want to dive into that, but uh, I think uh, it's, it's really interesting uh, if you have some time. Time, that's only two more minutes, which is almost perfect. So I'm done with what I wanted to present you. And I think I can take a couple of questions if you have. Come on, there must be questions. Don't be shy. Okay. One, one, one. Um, how to plump uh, materialized value in the graph DSL, where, where you place it and uh, how, to, how to make it work? Oh, okay, so if you, that's a good question. <laughs> I already answered that to you once. Yes, right? you did, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so this graph these I create will create a uh, graph with not used as the materialized value. So if you're interested in uh, some uh, better materialized value, um, you have to use a different overloaded uh, version of the create method where you pass in some uh, graph element, let's say a source or a sync or a flow. And in this case here, for example, this current last event ID has been defined here. So we could have taken this current last event ID, put it here, and we would have uh, received it in that block again. So that's more or less the same thing. And the cool thing about that is that now our graph is like create will produce a uh, graph which has the same materials value like the current last event ID. And you, yeah, this, this way you can uh, make, make that work if that's necessary. 